Welcome to Vivid Talk Live. I'm your host, Gwen Witherspoon. I am the Principal and Chief Visionary Officer of Adam Red, an Atlanta branding agency. I'm a brand strategist and a better life coach. Vivid Talk Live is all about your personal and professional development. I want to help you learn how to learn a fresh way of thinking and doing for all you were designed to build. And I'm streaming live to Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope. And you can watch the stream and the replays on GwenWitherspoon.com. Replays are also available on my website, IGTV, and Twitter. So make sure you follow your favorite channels so you'll receive notifications when I go live Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So now tonight I'm continuing my vision theory series and I have created what I call some brain hacks um, of my own theories to simplify the stuff that makes you stop. And I'm going to share them with you. Now, introduce yourself in the comments and don't hesitate to ask questions as we go. Um, say hi to Ron. Um, he's going to be helping me monitor comments tonight. And I want to thank you so much for joining me. Please share the link to invite your friends and we'll get started right after this. Now, everything that you ever wanted to know about me, Vivid Talk Live, and how to, um, to contact me is on my website at GwenWitherspoon.com. I'm going to show you that there. And make sure that you follow me at Gwen Fuchsius on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and on your favorite streaming platforms. I gave myself the nickname Gwen Fuchsius after I dropped some knowledge on my sister, and it made me giggle, and it still does the same thing to me. So I kept it. Now, um, I created a proprietary Vivid model for growth and development. Uh, Vivid is an acronym for vision, identity, voice, and development. And I call that the process um, uh, uh, for how to really build anything, plan anything, make it plain, how to write your vision, how to make it what I call Vivid. So stick with me. This is what we're going to be going through. Oh, and you know what, guys? I, I have to confess too. Hi, Renee and Katrina. Katrina's here. She is also going to be helping in the comments. So it's always good to see you guys. Um, but I have to confess. So like I am, I am a teacher at my core. So these first few episodes, probably like the first dozen or so, are really going to be kind of instructional in nature. So I'm going to be sharing with you theories that I've and concepts that I've created so that I can help you just really kind of make them your own and internalize them. And so I'm hoping that they're real simple. Um, the feedback I've been getting is that, you know, people are getting a lot out of it. So I hope, you know, if you, um, if you have any questions or if there's any clarification I need to make, please, please, please don't hesitate to ask. You can send me an email at my website um, on the contact page, gwenwithispoon.com slash contact, or um, you can post a comment here, even if you are watching this on replay. Uh, we, we do watch the comments and we will make sure that we respond um, either in the comments or to you directly. So uh, please, please, if you have questions, let us know and um, we're going to do our best to answer them for you. So now I, um, I, I had last week or I think a couple of weeks ago, I used this, this billboard. And so my vivid model is based on Habakkuk 2 and 2 from the Bible. And in, in the New Living or the New King James Version, it says, write my answer on a billboard. And it says something like, so that he who hastens by can read it and run. And this whole idea of the billboard, I want you to get that firmly in your brain because you literally have to become the prophet of your own future and that's really what vision is about you are you have to imagine a positive future that you want what and and you have to apply that really to every area of your life 
So the vivid model is really how to kind of write it down. And I always, I like to say you want to write it on your heart. You have to write it on your own heart first. Then you have to write it on the minds of others. Um, there's a principle of, of marketing. I think I wrote a book. I think I learned it in um, How to Negotiate Anything. And it talked about the fact that uh, marketing is about owning the space in somebody's brain. You know, when we think, um, we we kind of carve little pathways into our brains. And when we first learn something, whatever that, whatever, wherever we got that information from and whatever it is, whether it's right or it's wrong, we are writing a pathway in our brain. You know, like when you were a small child, somebody may have said something really ugly to you and you know that carved a space in your brain and now even as an adult when you know better you are still kind of believing that thing right so it's the same idea about your vision and and it's you want to be you want to carve a space in other people's brain and you want to be the first one so you're owning that position and that way when they have that idea firmly planted in their minds then they can run with it with you that that's called that's how we, um, how I describe making it vivid so the vivid model is really how to do can kind of take you through that process and then last week I, t um, I talked about one of the vision theory um, concepts is building the ark and building the ark really is about how to plan anything so um, if you remember last week I talked about there are five basic principles to planning um, I have I've written so many business plans over the last 30 years. And every time I write, I well, it's not as difficult now, but before, um, in the beginning, every time I tried to write a business plan, I would stop somewhere. Like if there was some question I couldn't answer, I would just get stopped in my tracks. And now, you know, with all of the money and all of the stimulus and all the opportunities available now, um, because of the COVID-19 situation and because of the civil rights um, issues that we're dealing with now, there are all kinds of, of applications, you know, to fill out. And if you don't have the information for the, no matter how simple the question is, it's so easy for you to stop and put it off and then never get it done. And so building the ark is, is a way to just really think about planning so that you can kind of trick your brain into not protecting you from the pain of not knowing, but you trick your brain so that you can kind of press through the difficult part of planning. Because it's not easy. It's not easy at all. And um, I think it, it's easy to dream. You know, like a dream is just really ambiguous and um, it's this big idea. But then a vision is really much more specific because a vision requires that you start kind of plotting a path toward it to make it in, in order for you to make that clear, make that plain so um, someone else can um, can walk with you, can run with you, can understand what it is you're trying to accomplish. And so... Um, uh, and well, let's 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 review. Hey, J Jody, good to see you. Um, I feel like it's I feel like we got we, we're coming up with a family <laughs> every week. It's good to see your names on the screen. But um, so building the ark is simple. Anybody remember? It starts. It's five things, right? Anybody remember? I'm gonna see real quick. Y'all remember the first step? I know y'all was paying attention. We got a little bit of a delay too, so you're probably not gonna. Um, hear my question right away but listen building the ark is five things and it's first you want to look within you want to look within you got to look in your own heart and determine what's important to you what are you what do you want what are you trying to do what are you trying to accomplish right then you want to look up why is this worth doing you have to have a reason bigger than yourself and and uh, for taking action otherwise it's going to be really easy to um, to stop again okay and then so look within look up look around looking around is about taking inventory determining what it is you already have available in the way of resources and who do you have? What people do you have already to act, have access to? This doesn't necessarily mean that you know this person. Uh, it's just 
where can you get human resources and where you can, can you get some practical resources and then you then you want to look ahead and looking ahead is about applying the vivid model and when you're looking ahead it's almost like you're you're kind of planning the journey have you ever taken a road trip um, i grew up military as a military brat proudly and um, i loved i grew to love road trips and i would sit in the my dad would let me sit in the passenger seat and he my mom would sit in the back but my dad would let me sit in the passenger seat and he'd give me the map and he taught me how to how to determine like how you know how um how much how much further we had to go with and he let me tell him when the next stop was and all that it was delightful i loved it but so whenever you you plan a road trip you've got to plot your path from one place to another and you know sometimes you may be looking for a specific landmark and maybe it's shut down. Maybe that road isn't available anymore and you may have to go on a detour, but you have to start with a plan that helps you understand where you need to go. And so if there's some detour along the way, you still can get to your destination, right? So looking ahead is about kind of planning that journey to the best of your ability, right? Because the more clear you can get it again you got to write down your heart first right so the the more vivid you get it in your own heart then the the closer you're going to get to it okay and then the last step in the in the building the arc process is looking back looking back and looking back is not about getting stuck in the past looking back is about um it's about checking your progress it's about assessing how far you've come that's the other thing we don't we don't take time often enough to celebrate the progress that we have made when we start we set out on this visionary journey okay so five things look within look up look around look ahead and look back that's the the, the building the arc uh, concept now tonight we're going to talk about we are going to talk about how to produce. And remember last week I said, this is what I call the brainstorm. And I love this graphic and you're going to see it a lot when uh, it comes to my flip productivity system, but it really speaks to all the things that are going on and bombarding our brains. Um, if you have children, especially if you have uh, children at different ages, if you're married, if you're in a relationship, you have family members, you have concerns. Like I have aging parents. My husband has aging, um, um, aging mother. Um, you, we, you may be going to school. You have now we've got all these, you know, we got taxes and financial documents and all this stuff going on, right? All at the same time. And the, your brain, again, I, I, I mentioned before, is a, it's like, the, imagine it's like a bucket. You know, and it only has so much space. So when we get overwhelmed, we're getting overwhelmed because there are so many thoughts and ideas and pressures and all these things bombarding our brains. The bucket is getting full and you don't know what to do with it. And what we have to learn how to do in order to, um, to be able to produce, right? Even able to get to the vision that you have set in front of you, you have to be able to clear the, the brainstorm. You have to get clarity. That's what we all, we keep talking about. You know, we, we, we say it all the time. I, I got to get my mind clear, right? So we got to get the brain clear the brainstorm in order for you to be able to be productive. You can't produce anything. One, if you don't know where you're headed, if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish, you have to begin with the end in mind. That's what vision is about. That's why you, you want to make a vision board so you can see this is what I, what I wanna, want, what I want to have, or this is who I want to become. This is how I want to look. You know, I want to fit into that dress from high school. You know, you, you have to get a vision in your mind about where you want to go. And oftentimes we don't get the result, the ultimate result we want because we don't have a vision. And that's, the Bible says that that's, um, that we perish, right? It means that basically it's not prospering. It's not thriving that whatever area of life where we don't have vision, that's the area where um, we we don't see the results that we want. We're not being productive. Like so, the most unproductive area of your life um, can be identified and, or can be rectified 
by getting vision in that area, okay? So clearing the brainstorm, that's what we're gonna talk about tonight, how to produce. Um, now, I'm gonna be reading kind of some steps out of my flip book. So the flip productivity system at its core uh, is based on this printed planner, and I call it a life and an action planner. And so one side is for planning and the other side is for producing. So on one side of the book, on the plan side, it has it walks you through the um, the building the arc model, and it shows you those steps. And it also has some vivid worksheets to ask you some that where you can answer some questions to help you kind of just jot notes down as you get ideas. Um, because have you ever been? You listen to something. You you listen to a book. Or like I've been, I'm listening to a book online, so that's why I said that. But um, I'm listening to a book as I work out every day, and while I'm working out in the middle of the, you know of my neighborhood, I'll hear some thought or something that just really hits me, and I really want to write that thing down, but I can't, right? Or, and or you may be. I mean, at any, you may hear something on television. Uh, your children might say something. Your husband might say something, but that some there's a, a thought or an idea that grabs you how many times do you actually stop and go write it down if you're like me i'll be thinking oh, oh i'll do that later i'm gonna remember it i'm gonna try well again that's part of the brainstorm you, you start stacking up these thoughts and ideas and then five minutes later and now the older i get it's a, a second later <laughs> It's gone uh, because you haven't captured it and put it somewhere. So the flip productivity system, the, the flip book itself is about how to really manage the process. And also the, the flip book itself is a tool that you can use to capture. So when you use the, the flip worksheets or the uh, vivid worksheets, you don't necessarily, it's, there's not a, it's not a clear path, right? You don't um, set out to learn something new by oh I, I do if i do a b and c then that's going to equal d no it, it's there's going to be pieces and parts that you get here and there and if you if you're disciplined to capture the 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 little nuggets as you go um that's why i talk about becoming the prophet of your own future because those notes that you take along the way are like little prophecies and they really help you and direct you, you know, as you go through the process. So anyway, so the flip book is a tool that you use to kind of manage all of that. Now, um, and then the last step, just before we get totally into the um, into how to produce, the last concept in the Vision Theory series is about play. I was tempted to jump ahead and do that first today because I want you to really understand that a living a life of with vision in every area like developing a vision for every area of your life is the formula for how you are going to live your life at play and i call it the play formula strengths if you know what you're good at and you build your life around that you and you define what's meaningful and, and what's important to you um, and you divide your time by that that's going to equal play and that means that you'll be living your life being the best version of yourself and building and being productive in um, in the vision that you have been given. And that is that doesn't mean that you that nothing's ever going to be hard anymore. That doesn't mean you're not going to sweat. It doesn't mean you're not going to have to hustle. But what it means is while you're doing it, it's fulfilling. It is energizing. You live at joy. I mean, it's it's really the way to live and and um so that's my hope is that i can help you i can help i can do it for myself and continue to walk in it because i feel like i do that um every day getting to do this show gives me the opportunity to do that and so what i want to help you understand is how you can do that for yourself as well so to me that's the ultimate in personal branding personal branding which is where we started um one of the first week of the series we specifically were talking about um, how to apply the vivid model to your personal branding and so understanding who you are and how you're functioning in the earth, no matter what you're doing, getting a clear vision for that. Oh my God, that's that's the secret. That's how we live your how how you'll be able to live your life at play. So, so there we go. So, um, I'm gonna go here. So, in order for you 
to clear the brainstorm. I mean, I'm gonna grab my notes here real quick because I've got a worksheet in uh, in the flip book too. And it talks about the fact that producing really is about completing a series of targeted actions. So the, the way to clear the brainstorm, the way to get your mind clear, you know, you may go do something like you might go um, sit outside. I was watching something recently and they were talking about how um, this person was talking about how being outside uh, in nature, how that really calmed them down and really helped them like to, to just really care for themselves and take a moment to just to um, unplug. And I think unplugging and doing those kinds of activities, doing things that soothe you and help you to rest, those things are important. But it, but the way, the reason that you can find those activities that actually help you to rest is because it is clearing your mind. So that whole concept of clearing your brainstorm, clearing the brainstorm, that's the issue. You've got to get your mind like sometimes i can't go to sleep because i'm so excited about whatever whatever it is i'm working on that i cannot stop my brain from thinking when sometimes when i get super super busy and uh, katrina i'm always calling her in the mornings telling her but um sometimes i'm super busy and i will i wake up dreaming you know wake up from a dream about uh, and solving a problem that i was dealing with with my business you know all day it's crazy and um so then when that when that starts to happen i know that i'm really 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 working um, a lot and really need to clear the brainstorm but i do wake up with clarity because i get an answer you know after i guess after i sleep and my brain is rested in my sleep then solutions start to come so clearing the brainstorm is really about but you can do that with some targeted actions and um, that's what I wanted to get to because when your brain is bombarded there are some targeted actions I like which really are habits that and in in the flip productivity flip productivity system I talk about five habits that you need to master and so I'm gonna give you this list so y'all tell me how you doing in the comments tell me how you um, how you feel like you do with these steps because it's these are five habits that we all have to master and uh and just like the vivid model is a process these habits mastering these habits is also a process because you know you know how we are one minute you'll have mastery over one thing and then you let that slip and then you know you then you then you'll master something else so what we want to do is get to the place where we kind of exercise and strengthen our muscles our productivity muscles to the point where we're able to um kind of skillfully use these uh, at these habits to build the life we want so I'll give you the list so there's five of them um, organizing I love organizing I love containers I'm obsessed with containers so let me talk about my, my trips to the container store um, organizing tracking acting waiting and scheduling five things let's go back organizing tracking acting, waiting, and scheduling. And organizing, whew, some of us are super organized all by ourselves. Some of us uh, are over-organized, like we organize our order. My, sis, my mother is, my mom is a beast in the best possible way. Uh, she has she has like rows and dividers and things in the drawers and she rolls my father's socks and when I was a baby there were legends about her ironing sheets and so this is what I come from so you can probably know that's um, one of my strengths and my downfalls but um, but organizing and organizing really is a, you've got to find a, a place for everything and so even people who aren't norm who aren't naturally organized um, they I think in the end will admit that being organized or being in an organized environment is a one of the best ways to to clear your life to change your outlook to clear your thinking um, I, I love watching makeover shows queer eye queer eye I've been binging on queer eye for a while I think after I've worked a lot the, I want to go watch that and just chill but I love the process that they take the people through. And what's amazing is, you know, may come in um, and their their environment may be totally out of whack. I mean, just, they might stop just short of being a hoarder, but then 
uh, by the time they get to the end and they have the whole the Fab Five has gone in and fixed their totally redecorated and made it made their home look like they were in a magazine and made them look like they were stepping right out of GQ and all of that. You watch how they are transformed. So it's a perfect example of why order is super important in your life. You cannot be productive if you don't if you're if you if you're disorganized. The other thing is tracking. So tracking is um I'm I'm a little bad. I'm pretty bad on this one. So tracking like your uh, bookkeeping, you know, you need to be able to track information, track your money, track your receipts. Um um so just tracking in general. Um and I I use this a lot as I speak about tracking money a lot and receipts and keeping financial information together because from a business standpoint or a productivity standpoint, if we don't keep those things in order, then that's a sure way to sabotage you know, exactly what we're doing. So if it's something that you don't like to do, it's definitely something that you want to make sure you get someone to do for you. Um, and just create a system for how you deal with it. Then the other, so acting. Because I'm organized, I like to make lists. I really do. And I'm, I'm, I have listened recently and somebody was saying how right, making lists is a waste of time. And it really is. <laughs> Except uh, it's a waste of time if you make a list and you never, um, you never finish those. If you don't have a system for even how you manage it. Like what I suggest doing is creating like lists in categories and having a way to um, having a one place where you keep that information instead of having a bunch of lists in multiple places. And if you use a printed planner of any kind, um, you know, it's a waste of time to to write something down, write it, make a to do list for today. And then maybe you don't get through that whole list. So then tomorrow you've got to spend the time to go back, go find it, or you've got to rewrite it someplace else. So that's, it's a lot of back and forth and a lot of wasted time in that regard. Um, I read a book called, um, getting things done and in getting things done, he talks about how you need to have one place for your list. So I kind of adapted that idea, uh, into the, into the flip book and, what you want, but I've also added um, some post-its and different things where you could move that list through um, through your planner, and just a bunch of ideas around how to make it easier and how to manage those lists better. And um, but I also don't call them to-do lists; I call it an act list. What action do you need to take to complete um, um, your next task? Act. Act list is what action do you need to take to complete the C, this your next task. And um, because I think, um, yeah, there's a, a number of ways of thinking. So the one way is that writing a list is a total waste of time. Don't write a list, just get it done. Another way of thinking is if you're gonna write a list, uh, make put your list in all in one place so that you're not wasting time copying, recopying, all of that. And I have a system for how I can help you move those, move that list with you through your, your planner instead of having to write it on separate pages. So that's one thing. But then the other thing is, um, as you complete these tasks or, or thinking of them as an act list instead of a to-do list, a to-do list puts it out in the future. Calling it an act list is really about being action oriented. So I think you can kind of utilize both of the, these methodologies, kind of put them together. And one is an attitude. You know, you deal with one as an attitude. My attitude is that I'm going to be getting things done. So I'm writing a list for the purpose of getting things done and I'm using that list to help me trigger to keep my brain. So if you if you're trying to keep everything in your head, that's when the bucket gets full and you start to get overwhelmed. But as soon as you write it down, it actually helps to clear your mind. Um, so so acting. Then the next one is waiting. Now there's some things that are on your quote unquote to-do list, things that you need to get done, but maybe there's something that you you may be able to take some action on it today, but maybe you um, 
For instance, like with the, the stimulus money, you may have applied for your PPP loan for your business, but then you got to wait for, for the, the government to approve it, to acknowledge that they got it, you know, whatever. And then once they approve it, you got to wait for them to actually get you the money. So you don't want that to fall off your radar, right? So you, you still want to write it down, but you want to write it down so that you can remember that it has to get done. So it's part of your list, but it's, it's not something that you're in full control of. So waiting, but waiting also is not, um, waiting is not like putting, you're not helpless while you're waiting. Waiting is actually an action as well. And I think it becomes, it definitely is an action when you document it and you have a way to manage what you're waiting on. It's, I think it's, um, it's a way of showing your expectation. You know, when you put up, when you pray for something, that's a form of waiting. It's an action. But I'm, I'm going to now behave in a way that demonstrates that I expect what I'm asking for to actually come to pass. Vision is like the ultimate in, in faith, right? And so, yeah, so waiting. <laughs> I had another thought about waiting. I'll, 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 wait, I'll wait on sharing that one. So the last piece is scheduling. So also, if you're flying by the seat of your pants, you, you're scheduling things, you're setting meetings, and you know just in, by memory, and you don't have any way to document that. You, if you don't put it in your phone in some way, if you don't, um, if you don't have an electronic and maybe a, a combination of an electronic and a print way to manage it you are not ultimately going to be able to be as productive. And um, sometimes we, we allow ourselves to be kind of tossed back and forth by whatever happens through the day if you don't have some kind of plan. Like it's great, you don't necessarily have to have every moment scheduled and all planned out, you know, but you do wanna have a framework Especially if there's something that you need to accomplish, like writing that book, <laughs> and I'll, I'll scream, ouch, oh me, you know, you got to write the book. And one of the things that people say uh, when they're talking about how to actually get a book written is that you have to schedule time for it, especially if you're self-employed or if it's, just, if it's a personal project. When you, it's something personal, it's so easy to put it off because you're like, you're the one in control of it and no one else is driving or pushing your deadline so it's easier for you to just say okay i'm going to do that later right but then if you do that you allow anything and everything to kind of determine what it is you do and eventually it just keeps getting pushed back and back and back and back and back so we have to learn how to schedule because we want to control our time so that we can enjoy our life and our work okay so five things five habits to master you, you, you remember organizing is one tracking acting waiting and scheduling that's easy isn't it so if you think of productivity in terms of those five habits you're in control of them and the more you i have another principle oh i forgot about this one so let me tell you about this so i learned this from al and hattie hollingsworth in um, california and they did a workshop oh, ages ago that I was in. And I'll never forget this. They taught me a principle called repo. So repo. So again, another, another vision theory, but um, this one is not mine. So repo is about the fact that you can change any habit um, with this model. And it goes like this. It's repo is R-E-P-O-H. Repo um, stands for repetition. E stands for easy, P stands for pleasure, O stands for often, and H stands for habit. So here, here's how it goes. Um, they taught it to us in a chant, so it, and it was simple. Like, And I was a cheerleader, so I loved it. Repetition, easy, easy, pleasure, pleasure, often, often, habit. Repetition, easy, easy, pleasure, pleasure, often, often, habit. Okay, do it with me. Okay, ready? Here we go. 
Repetition, easy, easy, pleasure, pleasure, often, often, habit. Okay, I'm telling you, this is how you learn stuff. You know, you learn a song, you learn a chant, it's easy. So bottom line is, the principle is this. When I do anything with repetition, it becomes easy. When it becomes easy, it will become, I will, um, it will become a pleasure. When it becomes a pleasure, I will do it often. When I do it often, it will become a habit. So if you say, like for me, tracking is an issue for me. So when I track my finances with repetition, tracking my finances will become easy. When tracking my finances becomes easy, tracking my finances will become a pleasure. And when tracking my finances become a pleasure, I will track my, my finances often. And when I track my finances often, tracking my finances will become a habit. Isn't that good? I love that thing. That mean, I mean, literally, you can take that and apply it to anything, any one of these habits, and you can start defining what action you wanna take to master that habit. And uh, before you know it, you are going to be doing, you You will establish a new habit, okay? So yeah, isn't that great, Nedra? Um, okay, and you guys have any questions about any of that? Anything? Renee said, this is dope. Thank you, Renee. Very good, very good. Okay, so I wanna, tell, I wanna make sure that you are following me in social media at Gwen Fuchsias, and that is spelled G-W-E-N-F as in flower, U-C as in Christmas, I-U-S, Gwen Fuchsias, like Confucius, um, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I am Gwen Witherspoon Coach, youtube.com slash Gwen Witherspoon Coach. And I'm Gwen Fuchsias on IG, um, IGTV, and on Periscope. So you can follow all of those channels to stay in the know and to stay in touch. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. Gwen Fishes is brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Well, I don't know if I'm, if I'm brilliant or just obsessed or whatever, but I have this, I love um, charts and um, uh, office supplies. Isn't that funny? It, it makes me, it, it makes me giggle because I think it's crazy, but I, I love, I like making order, creating charts. Like I feel like God speaks to me in charts and I, I start seeing connections and how things happen. And so as I've learned, um, kind of created these, these little mechanisms, these, these vision, my theories about how to execute vision and how to write it and all of that, I, it gets me excited because I'm like, okay, wait, I, know, I, I figured out a simple way and now I can help somebody figure this out, right? And not suffer uh, the way I have suffered through all of these steps and processes. And um, it's just a really great way to trick, your, you, trick yourself into making things easier so that you are not the problem, <laughs> right? Like the thing that's going on in the inside of us is really the thing that makes us stop more than anything. And I've, I've confessed the terror that I was feeling before I started doing Vivid, um, uh, Vivid Talk Live. And um, I, I was telling my team yesterday, I think it was, they were asking me if they need some help or something. And I was like, oh, no, nah, I got this now. So it took like pressing through the terror and the fear of it. Now it is fun. Now it's like, okay, I get, I get to, to share these ideas and with the full purpose of helping you develop personally and develop professionally. And that's all I care about. It's just really fun. So anyway, um, oh, thank you, Renee. Oh, and you did an amazing job on um, Camille's show the other night. That was fabulous to, to hear from you guys. And I got to get my, I got to order my, my cream for my hair. So don't let me forget. Anyway, so I wanted to go ahead 
Um, and just to remind you, so GwenWitherspoon.com is the website. I still have the quiz up. So if you have not had a chance to take the what is the biggest obstacle to you being more successful in business quiz, please do. I think it'll really help you. I love assessments. And so you, if you hang out with me at all, you're going to see so how many times um, I recommend an assessment. I have some of my favorite ones that I think you should, that, that I, rec I re recommend over and over. I think they're really essential in helping to figure out who you are, helping you to understand Understand different aspects of your personality and helping you to get a language to describe who you are so that you can um, you can just share that more effectively with people I know that writing a bio is one of the most difficult things every time I ask somebody for one they just cringe and I know I feel the same way oh you got your mug very good very good you got to take a selfie and let us see um, but I want to this this particular um, quiz tells you whether you are a visionary, a shifter, or a doer, and it helps you to understand really how you can be more productive. Like maybe something that maybe you may be doing that's help keeping you from being productive. This quiz is going to help you do, help you um, get a little insight on that, and it's very quick. So go ahead and do that and. I was doing a daily drawing for when I was going live every day and um, I wasn't I was kind of iffy about whether I would do that or not but I will continue kind of maybe doing a drawing every week based on people that take the quiz and when you share and post in social media as well and follow and all of that that <laughs> says she wants a mug okay well you you got to just uh, go ahead and like and share all my accounts and take the quiz and you'll get more and more um, opportunities to win and in, and if and if, if you want to purchase a mug you can go to gwenwithspoon.com and buy one from the store so guys that is all I've got for the evening I want to thank you so much for joining me and come back oh I was, I was supposed to let you see my face at the end. <laughs> I want you to make sure you come back next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be live on Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, and then I'll post the replays to Instagram, to IGTV, and, um, and to, and they'll, it'll also, also be on Twitter. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the chat or gwenwitherspoon.com slash contact. And everything you need to know is on my website, gwenwitherspoon.com. It's been a joy to be with you. Thank you so much for joining me.